Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John Cena Sr. Johnny, the fans just haven't asked for it, they have demanded it. This August, we're headed back to Tampa for Russell House 2. WrestleMania weekend, we brought you Sinister Minister James Mitchell, TJP, Demolition Smash, Al Snow, Dutch Mantel Zeb Coulter, JTG of Crime Time, and WWE Hall of Famer Gerald Briscoe for in-depth interviews and live interactive cyber autograph signings. And if you want our Wednesday Night Wrestling Insider Special edition episodes to continue, we need your help to bring these superstars careers and lives to life. Bringing you free content seven days each week is an expensive proposition between appearance fees, air travel, renting the house, the equipment and everything that goes in to a week of shooting. We can't do it without you. As we prepare to return to producing live and ring events, help us bring you the superstars and legends of yesterday and tomorrow by visiting Indiegogo now and check out some of the great rewards. Wrestling fans, it's going to be a wild week in Tampa the first week in August. Get ready for Wrestle House 2. Uh, well, again, that must, do you, any memories of Jerry Jarrett? What did you think of him as a guy, as a promoter? He was all right. Honest? He was all right. He was all right. Yeah. Was the pay? He did cut a little nigga joke one time. Oh, did he? Miss Texas was having a match against Jackie Moore. Yeah, okay. against some girl. And him and Lawler was sitting up in the top of the Coliseum. And Lawler, okay, the loser of the match got thrown into a bucket of mud. So they threw Jackie in the mud. And Laura said, look at him like a little nigga dog, a little wet nigga dog. And I was standing there. And I asked Laura, I said, so that's what it's like? And he's like, oh no, Jack, we didn't mean like that. We were just bullshitting this dog. No, that lady didn't have it. I said, it's hard to act like that didn't happen because it did happen. You know what I mean? I said, you said it. We didn't talk no more. Ever? Nope. Let me throw this one at you. Again, I go back to the book of Tony Atlas verbally from what he said on this show. He said that the N-word was almost to form a Connie. Would you agree with that statement or no? Say it again. The N-word was used by people in the locker room, maybe more in his day in the 70s and 80s. It was almost a form of Connie. He said he was referred to by the N-word so much, if someone called out Tony, they didn't even know they were talking to him. Because he allowed it. He fucking allowed it. That's why I said, that's why I don't like that nigga to this day. Because he allowed it. You think if he stood up, and maybe put his foot down about it. You think maybe it would have been a little different? He would have got more respect and he probably would have got more goddamn me from a bigger push. Like I said, they tried this with Mark Henry. Mark Henry wasn't hearing it. And Mark's still getting a pretty nice Legends contract now in 2021. Yeah. Yeah. Respect. Yeah. Respect. Um, and you know what's even funnier? I don't know. You, I'm sure you're familiar with Dick Murdoch. Yeah. He uh, part of the KKK. Yeah. Tony would travel with him. He probably drove. And he said Dick Murdoch would explain to him his views of the KKK, and you know it's really not about blacks. It's about blacks mixing with white kids. And so I guess Tony felt he was getting an education traveling with these KKK members, which I just found to be odd but interesting. One night, we was in uh, Minnesota, I think. I had met this girl at the mall. Drop dead, gorgeous. Mall man. of America, the big one? Yeah. Yeah. Drop dead, gorgeous white girl. So we started talking. 
And she's what are you doing here? I said, I professional wrestle and we got a show tonight. She was like, really? I was like, yeah. She said, can I come? I'll bring my mom. This was the ECW show. I was like, sure. Her not knowing, and because she looked as good as she did, wasn't nobody gonna say shit to her about nothing. She came to the side door and walked in, went in the locker room and got a chair. The World Wrestling Federation was live at Northlands Coliseum in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, Saturday, July the 8th, 1989. In the opening contest, Tim Horner, replacing Hillbilly Jim, beat Boris Zukov. Mr. Perfect with the win over Hercules. The Genius defeated Paul Roma. Brutus the Barber Beefcake victorious over Greg the Hammer Valentine. The Bushwhackers beat the Brain Busters. Superfly Jimmy Snooker with the win over the Honky Tonk Man. And in the main event, WWF World Champion Hulk Hogan retained the title over Macho Man Randy Savage. If you were in Edmonton Live, share your memories in the comment section below. Use the links in the description box to keep wrestling legends working in our eBay store and on our world-renowned Patreon streaming service so we can bring you more interactive superstar shoot interviews to relive the good old days of professional wrestling. Check it out. Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year with professional wrestling content galore and need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after our Monday Night Raw review, it's Wrestling Inside Us at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. after NXT and AEW, join rotating legends on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday night after SmackDown, don't miss John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, history videos, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. For less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, get early ad-free access to our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times